Uh, lesson 1.6, surface area and volume of a sphere. This time, instead of sp splitting it up into two different uh, units, one with area and one with volume, we're going to uh, tackle them together. And so we'll look at a sphere, and then we'll look at, of course, a, a hemisphere, which is uh, related, as you'll see. Uh, in addition, there's going to be kind of a fun activity uh, halfway through that I'm going to get you to pause and do um, that you should enjoy. Okay? So, the notes. A sphere. is a set of points in space that are the same distance from a fixed point, which is the center. A line segment that joins the center to any point on the sphere is the radius. A line segment that joins two points on a sphere and passes through the center, of course, is known as the diameter. And So I have a very basic um, diagram right there where you can uh, take a look at that. Of course, there is an infinite amount of radii and diameter through a sphere. Right, the surface area is the total area of the surface of an object where the volume is the amount that it occupies. All right. um, so this is where, I know this is very uh, quick so far, but where I'm going to get you guys to pause the video in a second and go through um, this constructing your understanding activity. You're going to get to use um, some oranges. So come see me. I should have some oranges uh, available for you. And uh, you might want to do this one with a partner. Um, and I think you'll find it uh, kind of entertaining. So go ahead and you can pause it now. And when you come back, um, you can write the solutions in here. All right, so hopefully you've paused it um, and uh, done the activity. What you should have found out is that, of course, um, we know that the area of a circle is pi r squared, and that if you did the activity correctly, you would have found that approximately it might have been a little bit different. I had some students find that the answer was 3 or 5, but we were technically looking for it to be 4 if you did it as accurately as possible. All right. And um, we can use the formula for the surface area of a sphere to develop a formula for the volume of a sphere. This is demonstrated on page 48 if you want to take a look at that. Uh, this could be a kind of an enrichment type question on your uh, exam. So you determine that the surface area of a sphere turned out four circles. So very simply, the formula is 4 pi r squared. All right. uh, for the volume of a sphere, hopefully you looked on page 48 for a second. It's very brief. but you would find out that the volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. All right. So once again, those two formulas you're going to be given on the provincial exam and all your tests, so there's no worries here. Beautiful thing here, we got a baseball question, nothing wrong with that. Um, so, this one says the radius of a baseball is 1.5 inches. Determine the surface area of a baseball to the nearest square inch. Very straightforward stuff. So we're going to use the surface area equation. Surface area is 4 pi r squared. I always like you to start out with the uh, equation. Um, this is a good question for you to just to pause and fast forward to make sure you got the right answer. That's fine by me. Save yourself some time. Uh, you do have to write things down, of course, but otherwise you should be good to go. All right, so we got 4 pi times 1.5 all squared. I'll use my calculator here. And we have 4. Make sure you use the pi, not 3.14. Come on. 4 pi and 1.5 squared gives me 28.27 and I think it said to round to the nearest square inch so we're going to say it is 28 inches squared like so uh, one that's a little bit more daunting is this soccer ball question. Uh, we, as a result, you're uh, going to see what I mean here because you're going to have to go backwards. So they tell you what the surface area is. You say it's approximately 215 uh, square inches. Uh, what is the diameter of a soccer ball to the nearest uh, tenth? So we start out with the surface area equation. Now the surface area equation does involve radius, but since um, it's dealing with radius and we're looking for the diameter, just remember that once you find out the radius, we'll just multiply it by 2. So, we'll start out by substituting in. We have 250 for my surface area is equal to 4 pi, and of course we don't know what the radius is. So, in order to isolate for the radius, we must divide both sides by 4 pi, like so. Now we will take the square root of both sides, and r is equal to whatever the square root of this is. Now I'm just going to leave it all like that rather than simplifying. Just chuck that into your calculator. 
We have the square root of 250 divided by, recall for the denominator, when there's two terms, you use a bracket like so. Close off the first one, and then close off the front one that was opened when we took the square root. And we get 4.46. So the radius is equal to, I'm going to write actually to a number of decimal places. All right, and then, like I said, to get the distance, the um, distance is equal to 2r. So we can just say the distance is equal to 2 times that 4.4603. And we get uh, 8.9, like so. I think it's said around to one decimal place, to a tenth of an inch. Yeah, so we get 8.9 inches. Okay, um, not too bad, not too bad, not too bad. Now, we're going to kick it up a notch here in a second. Um, let's go to the next page. We have the volume of a sphere. The moon approximates a sphere with a diameter of 2,160 miles. That's fairly big. What is the approximate volume of the moon? All right, let's try this. So, volume is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. So I have 4 thirds pi, and then for the radius, what am I going to put in there? Well, got to be careful. Of course, this said that that was the diameter, so the radius is going to be half of that. All right, so that would be 1,080. Common mistake, people just look at the numbers, make sure you read it and see what's going on. So, now let's simplify this with our calculator, and I think you're going to see a little funkiness pop out here. We have 4 thirds okay, times pi. On my calculator, you don't actually have to hit times pi. Some years might not be the same. Uh, and then I go 1080, all raised to the power of 3. All right, and we get this big number. Now, your calculator may have actually used scientific notation at this point. I'm not sure. So I'm going to write it two different ways. So we have 5,276,669,286 miles cubed, or in scientific notation, probably in science you've been playing around with this a little bit, um, it's just a kind of easier way uh, to write big numbers. We would look and we would say, scientific notation, you always put the decimal um, basically like one after the first number, so we'd have to move it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times. So we could write this as 5.3 times 10 to the power of 9 miles cubed. Either one of these would be acceptable for a big answer like this. It is very rare in this course that you're going to be using this. In science, though, you'd be using scientific notation quite a bit. Right. My favorite type of questions to deal with in this section definitely are, uh, have to do with the hemispheres, as crazy as that might sound. Um, but you've got to think. All right. So, hemisphere is a radius of 5, and believe it or not, that gives you all you need to find out both the surface area and the volume. So that's kind of fun. So let's figure out the surface area. Well. Let's think about what we have here. If you can visualize this, well, I have a picture of it, the hemisphere, you'll see that the outer part right here is, of course, half of a regular sphere. So the regular formula for a sphere, so I'll just write the surface area for a sphere, we know is 4 pi r squared. Well, if I just have the outer part, then I have half of that, so I can write 2 pi r squared. And that is what most people do, and they make a fatal error. Because when I'm asking for the surface area, well, I may have taken away this kind of bottom part of the sphere. It's a beautiful diagram. But what I've added is I've added this bottom part. And what shape is that? Well, that's, of course, a circle, pi r squared. And now you can actually add those together and say, how many pi r squareds do you have? You have 2 and then 1, which makes 3 pi r squared. So that's the relationship. You can always, if you want to remember that whenever you come to a surface area of a sphere, you can always think it's 3 pi r squared, or you can do that little calculation like so. Now we substitute in. I think the radius was 5. So this one's going to give you, actually I can simplify that, 5 squared times the 3 gives you 75 pi, and then put that into your calculator. 75 times pi is 235.6. I think it did say to the nearest tenth, so I can write 235.6 centimeters squared. Okay, since we're dealing with surface area, remember it's always squared. Now, volume. Well, volume, if you think of it, if I go back to that crazy little diagram I made right there, the volume's just been cut in half. So that's really fairly simple, because we can take the volume of a sphere. So the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds 
pi r cubed, and we really just need to divide that in two. All right? And so when we divide that in two, you can write it a couple of different ways. You could have written it just like that and put all that craziness in your calculator. You actually could have done this too. You could have written this as uh, four thirds pi r squared. And then when you divide it by two, this actually will change to a six. And then if you simplify it, it'll be two thirds pi r cubed. So either of those should, um, should work. Uh, it's up to you. So, uh, I'm going to use, uh, I don't know, I'll use the first one. Um, I'll take four-thirds pi, my radius was five, all cubed, and I'll divide that all by two, because we cut it in half for the hemisphere. With my handy-dandy calculator, we go four-thirds, and you'll see how I'm going to kind of do this. I'll go, I'm just going to deal with the numerator first. So I have four-thirds pi, and then five squared, of course being twenty-five. So, so that's my numerator, then divide it in um, half. Oh, hopefully you picked up the mistake I made. I'm going to go back and change that. I needed to raise to the power of 3. You notice that I kind of stopped right there because I, uh, I felt like that number was a little bit on the small side. So we have now 5 raised to the power of 3. That's a bit better. Now we divide by 2, and we get roughly... 261, I think it's at the nearest tenth again, so we have 0.8 centimeters cubed. Okay. You could try it this way to uh, make sure that that works as well. Uh, we should have success.